Would that be all right? It's only 11.25, 11.30, I suppose. We'll finish. Something that's looking into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. How can we go from this place without hearing from Him? Amen. We hear so much from the skit. Just close your eyes and we will quickly get into the Word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Thank you, Lord. We gathered here because of you. Lord, we just pray that you will speak to our hearts. You know us. That you speak to each one of us, including me this morning, Father. Let your thoughts stay in us, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're just going to look at some few thoughts that the Lord has given me. And uh, I'll, ask, I'll just wait for the slide to come and uh, we'll start. I'll, I titled the message this morning as... The God that became man. Amen. God that became man. And I'm just going to share a few thoughts. I will just spend a few thoughts and a few things that God has put in my heart. But it's important to know today as we're coming to remember the God that became man. I mean, I could go on, but uh, it's good for you to see it and follow the message. Hallelujah. I'll just touch a few things then as, as uh, it's like counting, so we don't waste time. There are a few things the Lord has put in my heart. The first one is the importance of remembering the event. Amen. The importance of remembering the event. The second one is the historical relevance of deity. The historical relevance of deity. The third one is the fulfillment of prophecies. In fact, it's amazing what they cover, what they shared now. It's almost half of what I'm going to share and cover the balance. Third one is fulfillment of prophecies. And the fifth one is five essential truths that happened at the birth of Christ. Five essential truths that happened at the birth of Christ. And the sixth one would be applications to the five truths that we're going to see. We'll follow. The first one I said, importance of remembering the event. We are here, we have come here to remember the great event in the human history, isn't it? That took place more than 2,000 years ago. We all agree with that. Now, irrespective of the day and the date of this historical event, we can come together as Christians all over the world meeting, meditating on what God has done in entering, God has done and he entered the curtains of time, so to speak, isn't it? Putting on flesh to relate and to restore mankind back to himself. That's what we're talking about this morning. He entered the curtains of time to put on flesh and to restore and to relate to man back to himself. Now we can argue and debate on date or month that might be parallel with the other so-called secular or pagan themes. But are, we, are we, but are we going to forget the significance of the event? that overrides the emphasis of all other things, isn't it? So are we going to forget the significance of what happened? And we've seen an illustration this morning as well as Tabby and Buck was talking about, about the birthdays. We all have a birthdays, we all know, hopefully we all know when we are born, the date. Do we all know a day? Yeah. Yeah? All of you know when day? Does that day comes every year, the same day? No. How many of you know when, when, when day you were born? Which day? Yeah. I sort of found out. When is born on a Thursday. When is When you go on there, you forget. <laughs> <laughs> but every year to the day comes back. In fact, it comes every seven years, it seems. Because seven days in a week. Yeah. But you know what? In fact, we are, if we can remember your date and day, we're still blessed. If you go back to our forefathers, Auntie will tell you even. Four grandfathers, they don't even have the date right. Is that right? 
They didn't even know because of the record keeping in the hospitals and some of them not even born in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. They were born at home. If you go back for uh, our grand great grandparents, they didn't have the date right, friends. But does that mean they never born? They was not born? <laughs> and with all the ordeal that the mom goes through before the birth and after birth doses I'm talking about, they just want to survive with the baby and the joy. Sometimes they don't even know which day it was because it was such a ordeal. But they still come together every year. Why? To remember the gift of life and to remember what God has done. If that was so much, why? Because the, the event is more important than the actual days. Friends, so what we're doing is we're remembering, we've seen this kid today, fantastically put, amazingly put. But that's the thing. So we, what is that significance? What is important is remembering the event. His Christ was born, historically ver verifiably. Yes, he was born. Good, next one. The five points I told you will, be, will come up. The first one, the importance of remembering the event. Everyone can see it? Yeah. Yeah, I can see. If you're off the slide, if you want, that's fine if we can get more clear. Second one is historical relevance of deity, as I said. The first one is the importance of remembering the event. Second is the historical relevance of deity. Now, the birth of Christ is historical verifiably, verifiable and accurate. The place of birth is real. How many of us know where Christ was born, historically? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. And the word Bethlehem means, anyone knows? The house of? God. Bread. Oh, Bethlehem is the house of bread. That is real. Jesus' earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, were real people. Yeah. Recorded in history. But do you know what is more important in, in history, friends? Is that God becoming man? Mm. There is no there is no God that came to earth to become born to be born as a man to reveal Himself to man. There is no God that came to earth to be born as a man to reveal Himself to man. God is not only for the Christians. God is for everyone. Mm. The love of God is for everyone. Now, every other so-called faith is man. I mean, this is very important, crucial to remember. Every other faith, yeah, is man reaching out to God. But do you know, only in the Christian faith, God reached out to man. Amen. Get that right. Every faith you... You reach out, man reach out to God, reaching out to God, do's and don'ts, keeping your life, try to keep. But only in the Christian faith, God reached out to man. It happened at Bethlehem. That God reached out to man. We often hear this saying, isn't it? Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship. Only if you hear that. You know why? Because in religion, man reached out to God. But in Christianity, God reached out to man, we don't have a religion, but a relationship in the score with God. The scripture says in Hebrew 11, 6, the later part of it, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. You see the relationship and belief is something of conscious effort that you take. That he is God and he is a rewarder of all those who seek in 11.6 of Hebrews. So we got the historical event, the relevance of the deity, that God becoming man, friends. The third one, I move quickly. It's a fulfillment of prophecy. We heard it this morning, I didn't know that. Just put the third slide, brother, the fulfillment of prophecy, next after that. Aaron was, Aaron's son was spot on, what he said. And the third one, there are 351 Old Testament prophecies are fulfilled in Jesus. Every one of them. Even the literal details of the birth were mentioned. Christ will be born in the right family line. 
That's in 2 Samuel of the Old Testament, 7 12, and Samuel 9 7. Christ will be born in the right way, virgin birth. That is in Isaiah 7 14. Christ will be born at the right place, Bethlehem. That is in Micah 5 2. And Christ will be born at the right time. Before the city of Jerusalem and the temple, before the temple were destroyed. Christ comes in his time, lives, dies, resurrected, and then you find the fall of the temple, which is which is prophesied in Daniel 9:26. Friend, why do I say all that? There's 351 prophecies of the Old Testament. Not one, as Aaron son said, not one was missed out. You know the probability if you go in, in in mathematics to see the probability of, of happening. That is what Christ's birth is all about. And how can we then not remember this event? How can we be? How can we get caught up with all other things and don't understand what it took God to become man? Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. The third one, is, the fourth one I said, five essential truths that happened at the birth of Christ. I just want to reflect on five essential truths, friends, this morning. And I hope the Lord speak to you and me. The first one. Next one, sir. The first one we see. God saves us. Just five truths I'm going to speak this morning. Next one, Mark. God saves us. Matthew, Matthew 1 21 tells us, isn't it, that he came to save us from our sins. Luke 2 11 tells you the same thing. He spoke to shepherds, he spoke, he spoke to Mary. He said the, one of the primary essence of God coming is to save us, friends. <laughs> from what? To save us from our sins. We need to understand that salvation from sins was a strange and foreign thing in the years of the Old Testament people. For them it was strange because they had salvation in terms of mortal enemies, isn't it? Salvation was God delivering them from, from, from the kingdoms, from the people around them. They always fought those enemies and God delivered them. Salvation was always mortal enemies, physical, but never spiritual. Never saving people from sins. Just imagine, Christ tells, the angel tells Mary that this child is Jesus. He is to save the people from their sins, from his people from his sins. Powerful. Christ was bound to save man from himself. What is sin? Or oh, we, we know the 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 uh, symptoms or the result, results of sin. We talk about immorality, we talk about wickedness, we talk about pride, we talk about covetousness, but they are all just outworking of sin. <coughs> but what is sin? The, the New Testament gives you two definitions of sin very clearly. One, sin is falling short the glory of God. Sin is falling short the glory of God, meaning we were called to be in the glory of God, but we fell short. That's one definition of sin. The second one, both in the New Testament, is missing the mark. You picture an archer with the arrow and the bow in his hand, aiming bullseye at a target, trained person, done this before, and he aims at the target bullseye and missed the mark. That's the picture. So sin is falling short the glory of God and missing the mark. All other, all other things is the outworking of that. Christ came to save us. He came to save man from himself, which was killing him. The nature of destruction. Christ was born. One of the primary of the birth of Christ is to, to produce, to, to promote salvation. He can change our nature of destruction into his nature of glorification. 
That's what Christ does. That's what the birth of Christ. The first thing is came to save his people from their sins. The second one we see here, God is with us. Isaiah, Old Testament prophet, thousands of years ago, 714, speaks about Emmanuel. God is with us. You can go home and read the scriptures. And then Matthew echoes the same thing of 123, that God is with us. This is portraying the birth of Christ, the God is the birth of Christ. Now hear me, he, Jesus came not only to save us from our sins, but also to be with us. You got that this morning. What a joy and privilege to know that the purpose of his birth was not only to save us, but it also to be with us. Is that, is that amazing this morning? The birth is not just to save us, but he wants to be with us. He's Emmanuel. I got this quote long time ago, months ago, I think years ago I saved it. It says, we're talking about God is with us. It says at Yomi, at Bethlehem, some of you will hear this quote, God became, he became God with us at Bethlehem. At Calvary, he became God for us. At Pentecost, he became God in us. You got that? At Bethlehem, he became God with us. At Calvary, he became God for us. At Pentecost, he became God in us. Friends, if there's no Bethlehem, there's no Calvary. And there's no Bethlehem and Calvary, there's no Pentecost. It has to be a Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to build this up, but there's so much there in this that God needed a legal entry to come into the earth because the rights were given, legal rights were given. Man blew it. Man had dominion over everything. God said, you have dominion, you subdue everything. I'm talking about the, the man, the Adam and Eve. But he said, you shall keep my word. And we know what happened. He blew it. And God had no right to enter into man because he doesn't have a legal right. You and me have a legal right, friends, here. A legal right. God himself, a creator, could not have a legal right. You know why? Anyone has, has why? He didn't have a body. The soul and the spirit is intangible, but the body is a legal right. That's why Satan does not, doesn't need a body to function. He does illegal things, but legally, that's how God made it, for a body to function. And Christ, you know which is the, which is the Christmas, first Christmas? Mentioned in 3.15 in Genesis. Christmas started there. What was that? He told Eve the promise that your seed will trample the head of the serpent. And he will bite your heel. He gave the promise to, to Eve. He said, it's going to come from your seed. Christmas was already started there. Genesis 3.15. And God was waiting for the right time to take a woman and really put Jesus in it. Put himself in it. Who's Jesus? Do you know that the baby does not mix with the mother three, six months? Oh, nine months? Do you know that? The blood do not mix? How many of you know that? The placenta or basis. It will not mix with the mother. And Christ needed a, who? Needed a body, but needed to yet at the same time to be holy and perfect. To come into a woman. To come as a body. To take the legal rights back and give it to us. And that's why Bethlehem is so important. I believe has as much as we, 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 we give importance to resurrection, but I strongly believe the birth of Christ is more important. And then we tried everything to stop that, didn't he? But it's a legal rights and God is holy. God stands by his word. He does not go back by his word. He's not a liar. If he said that means he stands by his word and he's faithful. God is not Having holy, he is holy. 
God is not having love. He is love. We don't even know that. We don't understand what love is. He is love in his core. He is holy in his core. And here Bethlehem was God became with us. That's powerful. At Bethlehem he became God with us. At Calvary he became God for us. And at Pentecost he became God in us. That's powerful. So we move on to the third one. God's favor on us. The birth of Christ speaks about that in Luke 2.14. God's favor in us. You can see that. The shepherds were ordinary people as we've seen. They hear the multitude of angels praising God. What they were praising? Proclaiming goodwill, peace and goodwill to man. Friends, the birth of Christ, the third point, brings goodwill to man. Meaning God's approval and favor to his people. It also means God expresses his good, good heart, God's heart and intent towards people. Friends, let me share you something. Let me hear something <coughs> we need to understand here. When the angels were rejoicing, they were echoing. They say, peace and goodwill. There was multitude of angels. The shepherds seen that. They were rejoicing, praising, goodwill. Peace and goodwill towards men. You know what? I was just waiting in the Lord for so long. And I have read the scripture, I don't know how many times, thousand times, all my years when I came to Christ. But I didn't see it what I've seen just a few days when I was waiting on the Lord. It blows you, isn't it? All these years I've known the scripture for 25 years actually. Isaiah 54, 10. The angels were rejoicing, echoing Isaiah 54, 10. Anyone knows what's Isaiah 54, 10? Quickly. Some of you will know it in a song. When I came to Christ, that was a song I loved so much. But I didn't know the meaning of that. Isaiah 54, 10. Anyone guessed it? Let me read it. And you'll say, oh yes, I know that. 54, 10. For the mountain shall depart, and the hills be removed. No? But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed. Says the Lord, that I have mercy on thee. You know, I was very in asking God, and I never seen this before in my years, friends. So it really blew me. What is the covenant of peace? He says, the mountains can depart, if it's possible. The hills can be removed. But my kindness, neither my covenant of peace. What's that? What's the covenant of peace? We know God has so many covenants. We see it in the in few months. I was doing a series on Jesus, the new covenant, and I, I showed you that the covenant that He made with, with Abraham, the covenant He made with Noah, David, and then the covenant He made with Moses with the laws and commandments. But here He says, "Covenant of peace will not de depart," meaning is irrevocable, can't be revoked. What is that? You see the old the old covenant, which was. 1,400 years towards God's people. Remember when you say God's people, it was a tiny nation called Israel. That commandments of the law came to them to keep it. Imagine even that time there were millions of people around Israel in that time. But it was this nation that God called God's people. 1,400 years towards God's people, the whole covenant was. But God's anger and wrath was on, on the people. You know why? Because none of them could keep the commandments. The disobedience, the sins, the transgressions to God's commandments. None of them could keep. What would God do as a holy God with the sin? He has to deal with sin for how he does it. Punished. Christ came into the world to take that punishment of sin. And yet the angel is the same. The covenant of peace. The covenant of peace. And therefore you and me have goodwill and peace. Because of Christ what is done. See the embodiment of peace we see. The, the full thing got embodied in Calvary. But where does it start with the covenant of peace? When Christ was born. God is holy. So he has to punish anything which is sin. 
and Christ came, friends. The count of peace. And, and Isaiah said, seen that years ago, he said, well, that count of peace is irrevocable. That can now be removed. Even the, even the mountains can be removed. Even the hills could be depart. But his peace, what is that? He's talking a time when there was law. The covenant of peace. We know now from this side of the cross, what is the covenant of peace is. Christ's birth brought peace and goodwill, meaning God's favor on us. The fourth one, God, God's empower us to worship. You see at the birth, and that's also been covered by Hagen. Three wise, I mean wise men, and I just want to say that. There's no, there's no way anywhere in the scripture says there were three wise men. But the wise men, what they came, anyone knows? Skip people? Came from the east. Why they came all the way following a, a heavenly sign, a star? What was the purpose they came? Worship. Worship. They came only to worship the young child. Three times you find that word worship is in, in Matthew 2, chapter 2, 2, 8 and 11. We see the very first incident of worshiping Jesus. Christ's birth empowered worship. The wise men were drawn to worship. Then we see the, then we see the shepherds, isn't it? Luke 2, 20. It says that they returned glorifying and praising God. That was the first praise and worship. Shepherds praise God for all that they see. The wise men worship God. Don't let people tell you that wise men are fools. Yeah, so we have that kind of culture, isn't it? PhD, permanent brain damage. Yeah. Rubbish. <laughs> Sorry. I just go through and see people not making any sense with something. Who was the wise man came? Who worship? Wise man. And as Adam Sam said, they were, history tells you that wise men are noble people, educated people, wealthy people, influential people. They were philosophers of all sorts. They were counselors of rulers, learned in all wisdom of the ancient East. But they were seeking Christ's child. With all that they knew, it brought them on the knees to worship God. Friends, because of the baggage that we have, we think all learned people will go to hell. One of the fine learned people, who is the, who's the learned people who wrote the New Testament completely, who wrote 13 letters, and had third heaven's experience. You know who was Paul? If you want to compare him now, he's, he, uh, he's, he, he'll, be cap, he'll be qualified and up to four, four PhD holders, at least four to five. PhD, doctorate, studies, that's Paul. Seven languages he can speak, cosmopolitan. Yet he was humble to the core. Friends, do you find wise men? Well, worship God, that's fantastic. They came all the way from somewhere. Imagine this coming with so, such a faith, looking at the star, no. God was there, isn't it? Brought them to the place. Even he, wrote, uh, he and Herod had his own way in that. But God led them. Friends, worship. The act of worship leads you to the object of worship. Worship was here in the very beginning of, of Christ's life. The very, when he was a baby, there was worship. There was praise and worship. Sometimes we so hard to get ourselves to worship, isn't it? But God empowers us to worship. In, you see that in, in the birth of Christ. And the, four, uh, the fifth one, God's kingdom to us. Luke 1, 33. You know, Christ's birth brought the kingdom of God to us. The starting of it. The angel tells Mary in Luke 1, 33, his kingdom shall have no end. And there's even just Daniel seen it in Daniel 7, 3, 13, 14. He describes it as a son of man. We know son of man now. Definitely not an angel or archangel. Daniel sees the vision in chapter 7. And he sees the son of man. And how does he see the son of man? How do we know it can't be a cherub or an angel? Anyone knows how? How do we know it can't be an angel? 
because look at what he says in 13. I saw in the night vision, a behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven, came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near to, they brought him near before him. You see the Trinity there? They brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, glory, is it, is it angel? Kingdom, and that all people, all nations, all languages, I love that, shall serve him. All people, all nations, all languages will serve him. And his kingdom will be an everlasting. And which will not be destroyed. If you call Jesus in, Sp in Spanish, he still hear you. If you call him in African language, he still hears you. If you call him in Tamil, he still hear you. Because all languages, all people, all nations will know him and he will know them. And here it says the kingdom, Christ birth started the kingdom of God. And you know Jesus when he started his ministry, what did he say first? The kingdom of God is near. <coughs> Repent. All the time he went on talking about the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is new, it's come down. Friends, we are the kingdom of God because of what? Because of the birth of Christ. And verse 14 Daniel says, his kingdom shall not be destroyed. And here you find Matthew exactly what Mary tells, uh, angel tells Mary, that is, his kingdom will last forever. Friends, for five things. God saves us. At, you see that in the birth of Christ, He came to save us. He came to be with us. He came to give us favor and goodwill. He came to empower us. And He came to bring His kingdom to us. Now the five applications of, of this. Next, uh, next slide, I'll finish in two minutes. What, all this applied to our lives. What does it mean that He came to save us? Deliverance friends, free from our sin. Can I ask you a question this morning? Are you free from sin? Don't answer. Yes. Yes. Do you have victory over sinful habits, friends? Do you have victory over sinful natures in you? Do you still have that short tempered? I came to Christ, you know, 10 years ago, brother. God uses me everywhere. But someone really stamps my feet. <laughs> I don't know, somewhere something comes by. <laughs> God came to set you free from all these things. Yes, we have degrees. But he came to set us free from all the sinful habits and natures. If he really saved you, then he delivered you from all that. See, we talk about forgiveness of Christ, but we also remember that he given us victory over all the issues in our life. He's given victory first for us out of sin. If we have some habits been there for years, you've got to ask yourself, are you really saved? You have to ask yourself, are you still walking in the spirit or are you walking in the flesh? Because all the things has to have, you need to have victory in your life before you go out and tell people Christ. Deliverance. So that's applying today. Christ said he gave us to save us free. Second one. Assurance. We talk about Emmanuel. He is with us. Christ is with us. We know that. We established that at his birth. But the question is, are you with him? And I'll forget one of my close friends years we used to do ministry. He always asked me, Adrian, how are you? How's the Lord with you? And I go on, you know, obviously, young believer saying our great things, oh, I, you know, my private hunter, I went there, then after a few minutes, he just listened to me patiently, he says, okay, how are you with the Lord? Yeah. Then comes, you know, Lord of our mm, yes, and but, and can't, and yes, and I do, and I, but I fall. Christ is with us, but how are you with him? Nothing can keep you, nothing can keep him from you, except you. Can I say that clearly? Nothing can keep him from you, except you. <coughs> Let this Christmas draw you to Christ. Let this Christmas 
have victory over sinful habits in your life. Victory over certain things that you've been battling in Christ. Let this Christmas bring you close to Christ. He's with you. He's not far from you. So you can reach him if you come close to him. And the third one, benevolence. We, we, we spoke about goodwill. We spoke about God's favor. See, because of Jesus Christ, we have peace and goodwill before God. 1,400 years of whole covenant was replaced before, because of Jesus stepping in and giving us a new covenant. Romans 2, 5, chapter 2, 4 tells us, goodness of God brings us to repentance. It's the goodwill of God. It's the goodness of God that we have. If, whether it's good of God that if we can re repent, even if we repent is the goodness of God. We can't do it by ourselves. Yeah. That's because of Christ was done. Even repenting is what he allowed us to do. Today we can repent and put on Christ because of peace and goodwill came to us through Jesus Christ. It's not for Christians, friends. It's for everyone. God so loved the world. No, he loved only the Christians and the Jews. He loved the whole world. That he gave himself, gave his son, whoever believes in him, 316 John, shall not perish, but have that abundant eternal life that he called. So here's the goodwill. Thank God we're not in the Old Testament. I won't be standing here actually, if I'm in the Old Testament, because there is no, every sin will be dealt by the Holy God. But Christ comes in, dies by life, put on my life, take my life and gives them his life to me. That's the goodwill. That's the angel says, oh my goodness, peace and goodwill towards men now. <clears throat> That's the benevolence of what God has done at the birth of Christ. The, the fourth one, reverence. We said, draws to worship. Friends, how we worship us, we sang. Let the worshipers Arise. Are you drawn to worship him? I'm not talking here on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, prayer group, no. I'm talking about your life, a form of worship. Remember, the, the wise men came because they had that worship in them. Are we worshipers? Can we worship God wherever we are? Can we be worshippers and when we come into a service like this, we bring that life that we have been already worshipping. And God just comes because he sees nothing eyes before him. So reverence, let our life be a life of worship friends. And the last one I finish, inheritance. We spoke about the kingdom of, of Jesus. He's adopted us into his kingdom friends. What a great joy, and that started the birth of Christ. He, his inheritance, we are transformed the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Do you know we all of us are going to, was going to hell? With all good works? Years ago someone asked me, why do your God, so good God, send people to hell? I said, no, this is not. But that's what everyone says. I said, no, you're actually you're on the way there. He stops you. Where is he? Nobody has to send you. You're already on your already sloping. You're on your sloping slide. In fact, his goodness, he comes and stops you halfway in your slide and turns your course back. All the good works cannot equal to what Christ, what he requires as a holy God. And here, he transforms us. He can transform you and me this morning, wherever you are. He can transform you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Unless we accept what Christ, is, what, is what Christ came for and done, we cannot be transformed to the kingdom of light, friends. Christ's birth offers that to us. The beginning of, his, of what he's done. Five things we have said. He frees us from our own own clutches of our own sinful natures. He, he comes and bees with us. He leads us to, to have a life of worship. He actually 
gives us his good will, takes away everything that we know, our past written off, and then he puts us into the kingdom of his own son. Friends, that's the good tidings of great joy. To be adopted into the kingdom of God. Thank you. God bless you. Can we all stand up and be close? Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we stand here and I stand here, fall short of all these things I spoke this morning, but Lord, your word never changed, Lord. Changes, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the congregation. If anyone wants to have prayer this morning, please come forward. As we hear this morning, it's not just a traditional thing that we do. It's all about Christ. The relationship that we struggle before God. If anyone feels me out, I'll skip a few minutes and before I close. I just felt that to do that. I want to come forward this morning. If anyone feels oh, the Lord is so strong. Amen. God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. If anyone's, that's all right. You can just be even in your place, but open your heart to the Lord this morning. It's not easy to come forward. I know you never like to go forward, but one day I did. But let the Lord speak to you this morning, friends. It's his word and his word alone. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, Father. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you showed us what it is that you came for, not to start another religion, but to bring back Hest to you, a relationship with you. Father, we thank you. We pray for this word this morning that you will speak to us, your people, Lord, as they go from you, as they remember your birth, more important, you re they remember your work, which you've done for them. We thank you for this time, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want me to pray for our sister. church for the sister who gave us calmness. I believe this was this was what has brought us. Amen. Can you let us stretch your hand and pray for her husband as she asked us to pray. Father we come before you Lord. We thank you for this your daughter of yours Lord. We thank you also for this young child as well. Lord we thank you Father. We know Lord that you have brought them here for a purpose that you know Father. Lord, we pray for this family. We pray for a husband. We pray, Master, we commit him into your hand. Lord, we pray what are the issues and problems that you're going through. Father, we pray, Lord. Lord, as, as the sister has already accepted you and know you, Father, we pray that your hand will lead her in what you want us to do, Father. Lord, we just commit ourselves, our body, soul, and spirit unto you. We know right now as we are praying that you are present, Lord, at this moment, Father, knowing the hearts of your, or your daughter, Lord. Father, we pray for, a, for you and for husband, uh, your son, Lord. Father, we come into your hand, what are the issues and problems, Father? We pray that you, at this day, Father, will release. Hallelujah. Amen. Will remove things, Father. We pray for sister that you strengthen her in her walk. We pray that you will give her the strong assurance, as today is said, that you you will save her, you'll be with her, Father. We pray for your goodwill in her. We pray for the life of worship in her and her husband. Father, we pray that the kingdom that you've already given her into the kingdom of light. Father, we've come at this, this sister into your hand, Lord. We pray, Father, that you, you have your way in her life. We come at her husband in your hand. As we come together as one as a family this morning, we lift up this family into your hand, Lord. This family has been completely 
Lord, every family is instituted by you, Lord. We, we bind this, these two people together, Lord. We pray for your hand to be upon this husband and wife, Lord, and the, and the family. We thank you, Lord, that you are God who sees things. Amen. Lord, we pray, Father, we come together. We may not know everything, but we, we, we just bring this sister into your hand and her husband, Lord. Have your way in their life. Break every everything which is strong, hindrances, Lord. Break every stronghold which is not of you. Lord, break everything which is which is which is preventing them, Father. Lord, every stronghold, every bondage, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you, you set them free, Lord. As today as we are thinking of your birth, Lord, you came to give freedom. Father, we pray that you strengthen them, you remove them from things, not of Lord, give them a new destiny, give them a new plan. Father, we pray that your, your hand be upon them strongly, Father. Have your way in the life. Sister, I just, just sense my spirit. Hallelujah. I just see that a candle that is actually just trying to lit up inside you. You know what that means. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There's something. The flame started to burn, sister. The, the candle in you. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Lord says, I am the light. Amen. In me, there's no variation in darkness. Amen. As you come and draw closer to me, you'll see your life becoming brighter and brighter. Because what I will do is I'll come in, inside completely every part of your heart, or your life, every part of your family, and I will brighten that place up. Amen. When you allow me completely in. Father, we thank you, Lord. Strengthen the sister. Thank you, Master, for the wonderful time. Thank you, Master. We rejoice in the sister, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. First, close your eyes. We finish with the benediction this morning. And uh, hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful, Amen. blessed Christmas. God bless you. Amen.